If you start seeing insects in your grow trays and you suspect some of them might be biting into your seedlings, then you can use soapy water to prevent things from worsening. And that's what I'm going to show you in today's video. Before we start, the treatment I recommend in this video is only valid for plants that are a few months old and look something like this, with spines all around them. You should not apply it to younger plants like the one you can now see on the image. These very young plants usually only fall victims to fungus gnats, and there is another one of my videos that covers that topic. Older seedlings cannot be hurt anymore by fungus gnats. Instead, they suffer from a number of other pests, such as red spider mites, thrips, scale insects, and mealybugs. This is something I've already tackled in my video, the five most common pests for the San Pedro and peyote. This soapy water treatment will work for everyone, whether you're growing indoors or outdoors. Indoors is actually where you would encounter the most problems with insects, due to the low air circulation and lack of rain. If you notice there are undesirable insects in your trays, the first thing you need to do is to take the plants outside, if they're not outside already, to treat them without making a mess. It must be in the late afternoon or evening, once the sunlight does not reach them anymore. Here, I will use soapy water to get rid of the bugs. This is what I recommend for the mild dust infestations. If things get more serious, you can use a tobacco tea, also mixed with soap, and I will show that in one of my future videos. But for today, we are covering the soapy water method. I use one and a half teaspoons of soap for one liter of water. One liter is about one quart. The soap I like to use is Dr. Brunner's Peppermint Castile Soap. You can easily order it on the internet. You shake the bottle well, and then you start spraying it. You should vary the angles to make sure the soapy water gets everywhere and that no insect can escape. You need to wet the soil a bit, at least the top layer, which is where you would find the bugs. Soapy water won't kill insects right away. It takes time. This is why I like to leave it to act overnight, and then in the morning I will rinse it off. You can expect some of the insects to die, but not all of them which is why it can be a good idea to repeat the treatment once or twice. For instance, next time the soil is dry in two or three days, you can repeat the process. And you can repeat it once more, two or three days later. Every time you repeat the process, you will reduce the amount of bugs in there. After the second or third treatment, there should be none left. But you have not won the war. You've only won a battle, they will come back soon enough. Dr. Brunner is not a dedicated horticultural soap. You can use it to wash yourself. But it also works great for plants. It comes with different fragrances, out of which peppermint is supposed to be more efficient in repelling bugs. In any case, it smells really good, really fresh, and it's always a pleasure to treat the plants because of the scent. I'm sure you could use other types of soap, but sorry, I wouldn't know about the dosage. And dosage is important. If you up the dosage to 3 teaspoons instead of 1.5, the soapy water will be more efficient in killing the insects, but it might burn the seedlings. Typically, the burns occur near the base of the plant, which is where the soap will stay for the longest. Personally, I prefer a lower dosage, even if that means I have to repeat. Once you are done spraying the soapy water, you need to leave the plants as is for the night. You will rinse them off in the morning. Do not expose them to any artificial light during that evening. The lamps, just like the sun, could burn the plants while they are still covered with that oily soap. Now in the morning, you have to rinse the plants. I use a different bottle, this one is full of clean water. And like I did yesterday, I spray from all angles to give the plants a proper rinse. Once you are confident the seedlings are well rinsed, you can water them as you do normally, with a sprinkler. Now in this video, I'm going to flood the tray until the plants are submerged or partly submerged. You may be able to see insects floating here and there on the surface of the water. It is a good idea to capture some of the insects with a teaspoon to later inspect them with a cheap microscope or magnifying glass. What I prefer to do is to take macro photos of the bugs that are floating with a decent camera and then I enlarge them on the computer. I have taken a photo of this insect. If you know what species it is, please let me know in the comment section below. I then tilt the tray to pour most of the water away together with the bugs. 
don't tilt it too much as you don't want the contents of your entire tray to collapse. You have to be very careful to avoid a catastrophe. There will probably be some excess water left in one corner. If need be, you can insert a branch through the drainage hole in that corner to unclog it and allow quick exit of the water. Now this technique of submerging the plants works for me, because my soil is fairly compact. But it may not work for you if your soil is more loose. My soil mix recipe includes some local soil, which is rich in sediment and also appears to have a small amount of clay in it. The clay is what ties the soil together and prevents it from crumbling down when you tilt the tray. It's also the clay in the soil that prevents the water from being absorbed faster and therefore makes it easy to submerge the seedlings. Also, the clay gives the plant stability and prevents them from falling over. So all this to say that this last part, the submerging of the plant, is something some of you might try if your soil mix is solid enough. Just be very careful. If in doubt, just water the plants normally. After that, the job is done. Like I mentioned earlier, you may want to repeat the entire process once or twice. Each time waiting until the soil is dry, so that's about two or three days between treatments, and maybe even longer if the weather is cloudy or a bit cold. If you think there are thrips where you live, you can also apply blue sticky traps. The ones I have come in large sheets and I cut them to size. Just a little square here and there is enough. Thrips are attracted to the color blue and they will stick themselves to it. Just like fungus gnats are attracted to yellow and come to stick themselves on the yellow sticky traps. If your plants are grown indoors, you should also try to expose them to the wind or the rain from time to time providing of course you have a garden or terrace. The rain really annoys the insects, as it can go on for hours. Some bugs will seek refuge somewhere dry, whereas others will eventually drown. When you just water the plants manually, it only lasts a minute, which does not really disturb the insects that much. You just have to be careful that the rain is something the plants can handle. Don't get them out if it's pouring cats and dogs. A very hard rain is likely to flatten all your seedlings. As for the wind, it also annoys the hell out of the bugs. You could also set a fan to blow on your plants that is very efficient in reducing the amount of bugs in your trays. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done that already and tick the notification bell so that you stay informed of my future videos. All for now, I'll see you again very soon.